I think other will other will <coughs> join, right? So people are asking how to check the normality of the data. So I'll just go through quickly in five minutes, and uh, then I'll proceed. Okay, let me share the screen. Just give me one minute. Yeah, please. Can you can you see my desktop? Yes, please. Sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, it, it is visible. Okay. So many questions about checking the normality of the data. Okay. So I'll first try to cover the how to check the normality of the data. Then we I'll move on to let me let me take some data set and explain it to you. Suppose this is the data, age, age data, that is just a serial number. The first is a serial number. And uh, let's say this is the age data. And I want to check whether this data is normally distributed or not. Right. So uh, first we will check by using graphical procedures. So as I mentioned, there are three graphical procedures. One of them is called histogram. So let me plot the histogram of age. So this is age along with the normal probability curve, along with normal probability curve, and check the graph. So this is what the graph says. Yes, please. Any participants? I'm just asking question from you. This is basically the normal curve, and this is the box plot. Sorry, this is the histogram which you have drawn. What you can say about the distribution? Is it normally distributed or it is not normally distributed? Yes, please. Anybody? Any participants, please? No, sir. Not normal, sir. So no. this is not normally distributed. Why? Because if your data would have been normal, all these bars which are outside, they should have been within the curve. Yes or no? Because this is a normal curve. Yes? Yes, sir. But there are some bars which are outside. So if some bars are outside, this says that the data is not normally distributed. And moreover, you can also see one important point that if you drop a line from the line from here, the highest point, then there are one, two, three, four, five bars on the left hand side, but maybe 10 or 12 bars on the right hand side. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Sir. So that means what you can say about whether the data is positively skewed or negatively skewed. Yes, please. So it's negative positively risk. skewed. Negatively skewed. Positively skewed. Uh, just think over. If you remember, I discussed positively, negatively skewed in the first slide. I mean, first Pause. lecture. This is positively skewed. Positively because, skewed. Because if you drop a line from here, and you try to drop a curve, curve will look like it will stretch more on the right hand side. If, if the curve stretch more on the right hand side, that means the data is positively skewed. So from here, two things are clear. Number one, data is not normally distributed. Number two, it is positively skewed, right? Let's look at the box plot also, how you can look at the shape of the box plot. So graph, this is a box plot and a box plot for separate variable separate variable means age and simple box plot i'll draw take this uh, age on this side and press ok if you press ok now again the same thing you can see the median line this is a median line the median is not there in the center if this would have been in the center then data would have been normally distributed right data would have been normally distributed okay but here you can see the median line is towards Q1. This is the position of Q1. This is the position of Q3. And now if you tilt this graph to 90 degree and start drawing the graph from here, so graph will look like this. It will go up to this and then it will stretch like this. So if you convert this to 90 degree and then you can see 
that again it will give you the same type of shape positively skewed or how to see whether the data is positively skewed from box plot if the lower area of the box is less upper area is more then we say that it is positively skewed and here same thing is happening so if you look at the histogram if you look at the box plot both of them are giving you the same picture same information yes or no yes please hello yes sir yes sir so and but the most important plot let me tell you the most important plot is called the qq plot have you done that or not qq plot hello anybody no, sir, we haven't done that no, you haven't we done. haven't done that we and have. that is that is the most important graphical representation whether the data is normally distributed or not so that is called qq plot okay let me just discuss where is that if you go to graph in spss there is no qq plot there is no qq plot under graphics where is then qq plot qq plot is under analysis and you go to descriptive and under descriptive you can see a qq plot can you see that yes please under descriptive statistics qq yes, plot sir. so click on to yes, click on to this qq plot and your test distribution it will check the normality of the data and your data is age right now let us check the normality of the data now then i'll explain you what is the meaning of this qq plot press okay and you will get a plot so this is the plot which is being coming up can you see this plot yes please yes sir now actually let me tell you what why we call this is normal quantile plot quantile this qq plot stands for quantile plot okay now what is a quantile you see median divides the data into two equal parts everybody knows yes yes please median yes, divides sir. the data into two equal parts similarly there are three quartiles q1 q2 and q3 q2 is nothing but median q1 and q3 are important and q1 and q3 and q2 they divide the data into four equal parts they are known as quartiles similarly deciles divide the data into 10 equal parts and percentiles divide the data into 100 equal parts then what is a quantile quantile is nothing but any fraction of the data any fraction right now there could be even 200 parts if, if you have 200 parts will be a fraction then it could be let's say i'm looking into 32% then it's a fraction but if i'm looking into 32.5% it's a smaller fraction then again right so what it does actually how this qq plot is done let's say i give you a simple example you can understand suppose you have 30 observations okay now you arrange these observations in increasing order from the lowest to the highest you arrange them in increasing order okay now obviously the first observation will form if there are 30 observation first observation will form 1 by 30th part of the data second observation will form 2 by 30th part of the data third 3 by 30th part of the data and last will be 30 by 30th that means 100 part of the data yes or no yes please am i okay yes sir yes now actually what it does it computes the quantiles of your data let's say you have some observations then one by that observation is this is the first quantile this is the second quantile third quantile and the dark line is a standard normal quantile that means the quantiles of the normal distribution they are fixed this is a quantiles of the standard normal distribution now these are your quantiles these are standard normal line if your quantiles matches with the standard normal quantiles that means the data is not data is normally distributed yes or no hello uh, yes, yes sir but here you can see that there are deviations from line here there are deviations from line here so if there are deviations then what is the inference that the data is not normally 
distributed. Is that okay? Yes, sir. So yes, if, sir. if you look at the QQ plot, if you look at the box plot, if you look at the histogram, all the three, because it's a data is the same, all the three, all the three are giving you the same information. But what is the advantage of drawing a QQ plot? The advantage of somebody was asking that, can you bring your data to normal? Now let us check. Can I bring this data back to normal or not? When it will be normal? When all these points will lie on the line. Approximately they will lie on the line. If there are one or two points here and there, that will work. But if all the points are approximately on the line, then you can think of that data is not not data is normally distributed. Now, how I can how I can bring this age data into normal? So let me do that. That's why the quantile plot becomes important. Go to analysis, go to descriptive, go to QQ plot, and there are some transformations here. Hopefully, you can see those transformations. Natural log transform, standardized value, differences, seasonal, seasonality differences. So let me apply natural log. Let me apply natural log transformation and then compute and then check the normality of the data. So what it will do actually, it will compute log to the base E of this variable, log to the base A of 18, 19, 20, 21, so on. And then plot the quantile plot actually so i have applied the natural log transform just to look at whether we can bring our data to normal or not we have already seen that this is not normal now after applying this transformation these transformations are only available under qq plot they are not available under histogram they are not available under pox plot but they are available under under this which is called qq plot so I have applied natural log. So press OK and you will see. Now you can see drastic change that most of these points are along a straight line. Because, and you can see the transformation is natural logarithmic. So if you apply a natural logarithmic transformation, your data is almost, almost normal. Almost normal. You follow, you follow this point or not? Yes, sir. Right. So that's why there is the importance of QQ plot. So QQ plot. So there are inbuilt transformations and you can check that your data may come back to normal. OK, so now rather than working with the age data, you can work with natural log transform and you will get the same result. Actually, then to estimate or something, you have to take out obviously anti log of that later on. Now, these are the three graphical procedures and there are exact exact procedure also. And they are known as Kolmogorov's Virnor test or Spirovelic test. Where they are in SPSS? Analysis, descriptive, and they are available under this command, which is called explore. So you go to explore, your variable is age, and then simply go to plots. Simply go to plots and in plots, now here it is given. Just remove this normality plots with the test. Normality plots with the test. So two tests will appear. One of them is called Spirovelic test. Another is called Kolmogorov's Virnor test. And your hypothesis here will be data is coming from a normal distribution. That is your H0. Data is coming from a normal distribution. And alternative will be data is not coming from a normal distribution, right? So normality plots with test. Press OK and you will get the result. Now here is the result. It says there are 169 observation. This is just mean SD, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And these are the, let's look at the quantile plot. This is a quantile plot. And it says that there are deviations here, deviations here. So what you can say, data is not normally distributed, but you have the these two tests also to check that. For example, Kolmogorov's Mirnor test and Spirovelic test. So here, basically, your H0 is 
data is coming from a normal distribution. Alternative, it is not coming from a normal distribution. Now here, the p-value in Kolmogorov and p-value in Spirovilk, both of them are coming out to be significant. Significant, we are going to reject H0. We are going to reject H0 means we are going to accept H0. Sorry, we are going to accept alternative. What was alternative? Data is not, is not normal. Data is not normal. So whether you apply graphical procedure or you apply these tests, most of the most of these things are giving you the same picture. Is that okay, madam? So I have covered yes. this normality test, etc. in detail. Hopefully, this will help you. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Now let's come back to my own lecture now. Let's coming back to how many participants now we have? About 24 still. Okay. No problem. So today I'll try to cover analysis of variance, repeated measures, and binary logistic regression. I think these topics have not been covered. No. They are not covered, right? But you know T-test. T-test has been covered, right? Yes, sir. T-test has been covered. Okay. So you know there is a... And now you know how to frame null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, critical region, level of significance, power of the test. So all these things are known to you. I'm just presuming. And then these are all I discuss now. The box plot, QQ plot, histogram to check the normality of the data and uh, there are two types of testing statistics the parametric test and the non-parametric test parametric tests are applicable to the situation when your data is coming from a normal distribution or approximately normally distributed data if it's there then you can go for the parametric test and in parametric there are two types of test large sample test and the small sample test if you are having a large samples, you can go for Z test. If you are having a small sample, then you have to go for what is called T test. And T test can be used for testing of a single population mean, difference of two population means, or paired data, or even correlation coefficient is tested by using T test. Right? Now, this you have already covered. Where to apply t-test? I'll take up this example. For example, can we say that the mean weight of a certain population is different from 60 kg? So that means under H0, you will write mu is equal to 60 kg. Under alternative, you will write you will write mu not equal to 60 kg. Right. So this is called one sample, one sample t-test. This is called one sample t-test. Why it is one sample t-test? Because there is only one parameter that is weight and i want to check whether the mean weight of a certain population is 60 kg or different from 60 kg so what i'll do from this population i'll take a sample of size say small n and then compute mean compute standard deviation and then apply t test and get the result whether the whether the mean weight of this population is 60 kg or it's not. That is called one sample t-test. Then you must have also learned about, I'm trying to connect this t-test with ANOVA. That's why I'm just repeating certain things. Similarly, does the mean weight in two regions differ significantly? Now, it, we are talking about two different kind of regions. For example, West Bengal is one region. Assam is another region. There are people in West Bengal, there are people in Assam. Now, somebody asked me whether the mean height of all the Bengali people or Assamian people, whether they are same or there is a difference. Right? That's a question. Now, I'm referring to the mean, mean height of, of uh, people from West Bengal and people from Assam. Right? So, what I'll do? I'll take few people, maybe a sample of 150 to 200 from West Bengal, 
and uh, maybe 250 people or 300 people or maybe 100 people from Assam. The number could be unequal also. Doesn't matter. Now we are taking two different samples from two, two different populations. One population is West Bengal, another population is Assam. And based on that, if there is no significant difference between the heights of Assam and West Bengal, I'll expect this at naught that mu1 will be equal to mu2, where mu1, let's say, denotes the on an average the height of the population of West Bengal, and this denotes the height of the population of Assam. Okay, and for this purpose, I'll take a sample from Assam, I'll take a sample from West Bengal, and based on that, I apply a t-test, and that is called independent t-test. Why it is called independent? Because Assam and West Bengal, they are independent states. The sample is coming from different states, right? Similarly, if I want to compare two different types of drugs, drugs, they are meant for the same purpose, then still I can apply a t-test. For example, to one group of patients suffering from, say, cancer, I give chemotherapy one. Second group of patients, again suffering from cancer, I group chemotherapy two. And my outcome variable is recovery time. Right? So if the recovery time of the first is same as the recovery time of the second, I accept this hypothesis. That means you can give any type of chemotherapy, either one or two, does not make any difference. But if this hypothesis is rejected, then obviously you have to be very careful which one is which one is more important. Okay. Now here is a very important point. T test can be used only for the comparison of two treatments or two groups. But sometimes we have more than two groups, three groups four groups, five groups could compare. For example, in India, there are three types of boards, CBSC board, ICSC board, and a state board. OK. Now, somebody asked me this question, whether the performance of all the school children of these two boards is same or there is a difference. So if mu1 denotes the mean of the population of CBSC, mu2 that of ICSC, mu3 that of state board, and I frame the hypothesis mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3, that all the boards are on an average giving you the same performance. Alternative, at least two of them may differ. That is your alternative because I cannot write not equal to not equal to because two may be same, they may differ from the third. So at least two of them may differ. Now. This is the situation where t-test is not applicable because t-test you can compare CBSC with ICSC or you can compare CBSC with state board or you can compare state board with ICSC. You have to make, you have to basically look into three independent t-test for comparison. Yes or no? Yes, please. Is this okay? Yes, sir. But yes, sir. I want to test all of them together, whether all of them they are having similar performance or there is a difference. For that purpose, we use what is called analysis of variance, and that is known as analysis of variance. So hopefully you can understand the difference between t-test and ANOVA. T-test is just to compare the two groups, and ANOVA is more than two groups. And in t-test, you also have learned about the pair t-test whenever there is a before and after situation or pre and post situation, then we apply the test test. So I will not cover this t-test part, but just trying to connect t-test with ANOVA. So all these are the testing procedures or independent t-test, pair t-test, this is the test procedure. And now we come to analysis of variance. Any Anybody has covered some part of analysis of variance or not? Yes, please. Yes, sir. yes, sir. one way ANOVA mm -hmm. analysis of variance has mm -hmm. been uh, done. The, the professor who covered the teacher who covered parametric tests, he mm -hmm. did one way analysis, not two way. Okay. So you want me to repeat again because in my 
talk, it's referred one way and two way NOVA. Should I do it again? One way yes, was done nicely. I talk for myself, others yesterday. Sir, please, please uh, teach us again. Please. Okay. Yes. First of all, first of all, you need to understand. <laughs> first of all, you need to understand what is analysis of variance and why it is called analysis of variance. So look at the first line. Analysis of variance is a technique which partition the total variation present among the set of observations into number of components. So total variation is split up into number of components. Now, I'll take up one example to clarify this statement. Then you will be more clear, right? OK. So here we want to test k different types of means. Mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 right up to mu k. And we can compare by using one way ANOVA. Already given you an example. All right. Now, look at this example. Then everything will be clear to you. Whenever we go to a market, let's say to buy tubes or bulbs, we have some specific brand in mind that I'll go for Philips or I will go for Bajaj or I'll go for Sylvania or maybe some other brand. This generally happens that whenever we go to a market to buy certain brands, we have some specific brand in mind. For example, if I want to buy, let's say, paste, toothpaste, then some people may prefer Colgate, some people may prefer Forehands, some may prefer Pepsodent, some may prefer Glister, and so on. It happens, yes or no? Yes, please. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes sir. Now let us let us take brand number one. These are brand number one, brand number two, and brand number K. So I'm taking K different brands. Then what is the observation? These are observations Y11, Y12 y1 and 1 what is the meaning of this let's say i take the brand as philips and take out 10 tubes from philips so your n1 will be 10. now you can see first script is fixed 1 1 1 1 1 why it is being fixed because they are all coming from brand number one so one is fixed but how many tubes i am taking from brand number one one two right up to n1 so n1 number of tubes i have taken from brand number one is the notation clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Similarly, in brand number two, you can see two is fixed. That all these tubes are coming from brand number two. And how many tubes I have taken? One, two, right up to N2. So N2 number of observations or tubes I have taken from brand number two. Similarly, if you look at the Kth brand, so K is fixed. They're all coming from Kth brand. One, two, right up to NK nk number of tubes from brand number k right now what are these observations actually now and what i want to test actually my problem is like this there are different brands available in the market and i definitely i would like to die i would like to buy that brand which is having the maximum life length yes or no hello Yes, sir. yes. So I want to buy that brand which is having the maximum life length, not the minimum life length. Okay. Maximum life so that I it can burn maximum number of hours. So I, I let's say I bring 10 tubes from Philips and test one by one. Suppose I put the first tube on test. And let's say it burns for 104 hours. So that that is my Y11. So your Y1 value, that means that it, uh, the burning time till it fails is y11 y11 is your 104 hours then again from philips i put the second tube on test and check let's say this burns for 128 hours so my y12 is 128 hours so these are nothing but the life length of tubes and these life length will be all from brand number one that is philips Similarly, these observations, these, these observations will denote the life lengths and all observations are coming from, let's say, second brand, then third brand and the kth brand. Hopefully the data is clear. What do you mean by YIJ? Hello? Yes, sir. These are the life length. Similarly, in case of, uh, in case of, let's say, 
medical example, there could be YIJ could be recovery time. Suppose there are three groups of patients. To the first group of patients, I give chemotherapy number one. Let me call that as K1. To the second group of patients, I give chemotherapy two. I call this as K2. And to the third group of patients, I give chemotherapy as K3. I call this as K3. Right. And then you have three columns. One column, those who have received chemotherapy one. Second column, receiving chemotherapy two. These are the patients. And the third set of patients who have received chemotherapy three. And what is my hypothesis? Hypothesis will be that the recovery time, YIJ denotes the recovery time. In how when, when the first patients received chemotherapy one, what is the recovery time? Second patients, chemotherapy one, what is the recovery time? And so on. So these are recovery times in that case. And what, what I want to test, H0, that mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3. That means recovery time, whether you give chemotherapy one, chemotherapy two, or chemotherapy three, they are same. Now, if I accept this hypothesis that they are same, then you can give any chemotherapy. Same way, if I accept the hypothesis here that mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu k, suppose mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 is equal to mu k, I accept this hypothesis. What does this mean? This means that the life length of all the electronic tubes are same. Then you are safe. Go to market by any brand. Go to market by any brand. There is no, no further experiment required. All the brands are having the same life length. Okay. Similarly, if all the chemotherapies, they have the same recovery time, then you can apply any, any of the chemotherapy. Okay. But problem comes when there are differences. When I reject H0, if you reject H0, alternative will be true. Alternative means at least two of them may differ. At least two of them may differ or all of them may differ. Maybe three of them may differ out of five, whatever. So next question comes. Two important questions. Which brand is better? That's the first question. If all of them, they differ. My next question is which brand is better? Number two, followed by which other brand? Because sometimes the first brand may be very costly. I may not be able to buy. Then I will go for plan B. That means the which is coming at number two and the third. So you have to think differently, right? Now, these are your observations. There will be variation present in the observations. Variation will be present in the observations. Now, generally, the total variation, total variation present among the set of observation here can be split up into two parts. Which two parts? One of them will be between the brand variation but they are because they are coming from different brands different material different machines are operating maybe different persons are operating right so all the things are different so you can expect that variation will be there due to differences in brands that's one type of variation but even if their tubes are coming from the same brand they will not burn for equal number of hours for example, if I take 10 tubes from Philips, do you think it will happen that all of them will burn for 120 hours? It happens sometimes? No. Yes or no? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, what? listen to me carefully. I'm saying that if I'm taking 10 tubes from Philips, do you think all the 10 tubes, because same material, same machine, everything is same, will burn for exactly 128 hours or no. not no so there could be variation even they are coming from the same brand same machine even there will be variation and this type of variation is called within variation so one is between the brand variation another is within the same brand variation so in this case if i write down here that TV, TV stands for total variation, is sum of two components. But one is between variation, another is within variation. You follow what I am what I have written? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So total variation is split up into two components. 
one is between the brand variation another is within actually within variation will be large or between variation will be large can you can you give some idea yes please which variation will be larger or which variation variation will be more between brand variation is going to be more or within the same brand will be more between so between between between, between. between brands obviously between it's a very common sense question why because they are coming from different brands different material different people are operating then obviously you can expect that within variation will be more as compared to between variation as compared to between variation we shift this a little bit here okay so that you can see now you can see that between variation will be more as compared to within actually if they are coming from the same brand same material same machine same person is operating there should not be much of the variation but variation sometimes are there and the within variation is sometimes also called error so this variation will likely to be less so total variation is split up into two components between variation and within variation and the systematic procedure of doing this that the total variation is split up into these two components is called one way ANOVA. is called one way analysis of variation is called one way analysis of variance so systematic procedure that the total variation is split up into two components is called one way ANOVA is that ANOVA meaning clear hello yes the, yeah yes sir now, as I mentioned that the total variation, now how many total observations are here? Please try to understand how many total observations are here? N1 from here, N2 from here, NK from here. So your N will be N1 plus N2 plus NK. Yes or no? Yes, sir. That is the total number of tubes. And if the total is your N, degree of freedom is always one less. You must have learned in your t-test. So degree of freedom for total will be N minus one. Is that okay? yes now how many brands are here b1 b2 bk how many brands are there k brands k brands so degree of freedom for between the variation will be one less k minus one right yes yes sir. now if suppose this basically implies that if the total degrees of freedom total variation degrees of freedom to, for total is n minus one and that is equal to between variation degrees of freedom is k minus one and this plus now can you tell me what i should add so that it becomes equal to n minus one or you can subtract n minus one and subtract k minus one so one and one will get cancelled so basically here you will get n minus k n minus k so there is no need to compute the within variation degree of freedom because once you know that two sums are available you can compute the third one yes or no yes please yes, yes. Hello. so these are called degrees of freedom these are called degrees of freedom so in analysis variance the total degree of freedom will be n minus one between variation degree of freedom will be k minus one and within variation will be n minus k is that okay hello the, yes, yes please sir. yes sir. right and now now based on this i can make a table so table will will look like this this is the table which will look like so here you will get the total sum of scares that is called tss then you will get between the samples that is called SST. That means sum of scales due to brands or sum of scales due to treatments. And this can be computed from subtraction. This minus this will give you sum of scales due to error because within is called error. So if SST is known, sum of scales due to treatments or brands is known, total sum of scale is known, then you can compute the third component because this minus this will be the third. Yes or no? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, yes. So total variation has been split up into two components, between variation and within variation. This is what I was telling you. 
in the same thing here. If you look at this picture, total variation has been split up into two parts, between and within. And that is the analysis of variance. Look at the degrees of freedom. For total, the degrees of freedom will be n minus 1. I have already explained. There are k brands. So degree of freedom with this will be n k minus 1. And this can be obtained by subtraction n minus k minus k plus 1. So 1 and 1 will get cancelled and you will get n minus k. Okay. What I, why I'm telling you these things? Because you will get, one, after the analysis, you will get a table of this type. Then once the degrees of freedom are known, sum of scales are known, you can compute what is called mean sum of scales. And generally we call it MSS or mean sum of scales. So first mean sum of scales due to treatments. Sum of scales due to treatment divided by its degrees of freedom. SST divided by K minus 1. Similarly, sum of scales due to error, that is called mean scale error. Sum of scales due to error divided by N minus K. So you will get mean sum of scales. Okay. And what is then F value? F value will check whether mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu k. How to compute this? Mean sum of scales due to brands or treatments divided by mean square error. You divide this by this, you will get F value. And if your F value corresponding to F value, there will be P value. And you have to just see whether your P is less than alpha or it is more than alpha. Alpha is 0 0.05. Suppose then if this P value is more than 0 0.05, you are going to accept H naught. If it is less than 0 0.05, you are going to reject H naught. So if I accept H naught, that means the life length of all the brands is same. You go to market, buy any brand. Experiment is over. But suppose I reject H naught. Then the first question comes. There is a difference. And if there is a difference, which brand is number one? Which brand is number two? Which comes at number three? I want to check all this for that. We go for another test, and they are these tests. This test is called post hoc test. These tests are called post hoc analysis. So I think this you have already learned. I'll take up one example to clarify one way ANOVA again, and then I'll move on to two way ANOVA. Okay. So I'll take up one data set to explain you these things. So this is one way over. Now here I am taking the same example. Can you see this data, please? Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. So these are the life length of electronic tubes. These are different brands. So first brand is denoting Bajaj. Second brand is Philips. Third brand is Compton. Fourth brand is Sylvania. The, what I did actually, this is where I have written, I have taken the first column of that, for example. These were the observations, if you remember correctly. I have taken the first column of observations. They are coming from brand number one. I have put 1111 in the second column. Then below that, I have written second column and written 2222. They are all coming from brand. This is what I did here. Hopefully, you can understand how this data is to enter. So they are all coming from brand number one. I have put 111. Then the second column below this, they are all coming from brand number two. Then the third column below this, third, and the fourth column below this, and 444. Later on, I have labeled that. How to label that? You know, first lecture, you remember. One is Bajaj, two is Philips, three is Crompton, four is Sylvania. You remember this part? Yes, please. Yes. Sir. So this is how to feed the data. Now you can write down your null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis now? Your null hypothesis is if mu1 denotes the mean of the Bajaj, mu2 of Philips, mu3 of Crompton, and mu4 of Sylvania, then H0 is mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 is equal to mu4. That means the life length of all the brands is same. That is your H0. 
what is alternative alternative will be at least two of the brands may differ at least two maybe bajaj or philips maybe philips or crompton maybe crompton or sylvania but there will be differences at least in two there could be at least in three uh, there could be many more but at least two definitely will differ is that okay yes please hello yes sir. so hypothesis is clear now it won't take much time to compute analysis of variance so how to do that go to analysis go to compare means and in compare means this is one way over your dependent variable is life length brands are your factor and then you must click on to post talk also just to save time you can click on to chefe or you can click on to toke both of them will give you similar results now sometimes i don't know whether you are aware of not what happens in biological sciences or medical sciences there could there are sometimes one one group is a control group you remember sometimes one group is considered as a control group and i want to compare let's say three other groups with the control group it happens sometimes in many of the experiment yes or no yes so if you are using such type of experiment that there is one control category then none of these tests are required then you straight away click on to done it and done it says what is your control category so control group either you can fix here where the bajaj is or you can fix at the end fix at the end means where the sylvania is written because there are two options here control category either last or it is first whatever either last or first you cannot put the control category in between i mean in terms of two or three either it could be one or it could be four but i i am not having any control category so i'll apply either 2k or chefe okay then press continue and then in options you must click on to descriptives and means plot that's all descriptive and means plot continue now you are one way now is done and here is the answer so this is the answer first of all it will give you a mean as the table that you have taken 11 tubes from bajaj 9 from philips 9 from compton sylvania 8 so total number of these are just mean sd of this is a mean of bajaj sd of bajaj mean of philips sd of philips and so on right now which this is the most important table because if you remember this table is same as between sum of squares within sum of squares and total now how many total observations are here 11 plus 9 plus 9 plus 8 total is yes please how many observations are here you can see 37 37 so one degree of freedom will be one less so you can see the degree of freedom for total is 36 can you see that yes yes and how many brands are here bajaj trips crompton and sylvania how many brands are there four four so degree of freedom for between group sum of squares between the between sum of squares will be 4 minus 1 so you can see 3 there is no need to compute the within group why because 36 minus 3 will be 33 yes or no yes right yes, then based on this this is the sum of squares sum of squares due to between sum of squares within sum of squares if you add these two you will get the third one you can add you can check 6 plus 6 plus 12 2 then 4 plus 5 9 then 8 you can check this this and this this will be this total then how to compute this f value if you remember f value is nothing but this divide first first of all mean square how to compute mean square 3694 divided by 3 you will get 1 2 3 1 then 3539 divided by 33 you will get 107 these are mean square mean sum of squares then f value this divide by this i mean 1 2 3 1.612 1. divide by 107.244 you will get 11.484 and once you get the f value you will get a p value so this is your p value the p value this p value is less than 0.05 or more than yes please less than 
So you will reject the hypothesis. Uh, yes, significant. Reject the hypo null hypothesis. Reject the null hypothesis. What was the null hypothesis? Mu1 mu is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 is equal to mu4. That means the life length of all the brands differ. The life There is a difference in life length. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Now I have to apply post hoc. If this would have been non-significant, was there any do? Was there any need to do go further? Yes or no? no. Well, this would have been non-significant. There is no need to do post hoc. Yeah, there is no need to do post hoc. Why? Because now life length of all the brands is same. You go to market by any brand, no problem at all. All right. But now we have to perform post hoc. So I have performed post hoc in two ways. One is by using two case test. Another is by using Sheffield's test. Both of them will give you similar results. For example, it will keep the first brand fixed and compare with the rest of them. So Bajaj versus Philips, Bajaj versus Crompton, Bajaj versus Sylvania. Now look at Bajaj versus Philips. This is the significance. 0 0.932. 0 0.923 means non-significant. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So that means there is no significant difference between Bajaj and Philips. But look at Bajaj and Crompton. P value is less than 0 0.05. So there is a significant difference between Bajaj and Crompton. What about Bajaj and Sylvania? Again, there is no significant difference because P value is more than 0 0.05. Okay. Similarly, once one brand is over, Bajaj is over, it will now take the second brand, compare with the rest of them. But whether you compare Bajaj with the Philips or you compare Philips in terms of Bajaj, you will get the P P same p value. You can see the p values are same 0 0.932, 0 0.932. Right? Whether you multiply 4 with 3 or you multiply 3 with 4, you are going to get 12. Yes or no? Hello? Yes. Sir. Right? yes sir. Now, here you can easily see. Similarly, Crompton can now. If you look at Crompton, please. Crompton versus Bajaj significant. Crompton versus Philips significant. Crompton versus Sylvania significant. So that means Crompton, Crompton differs from all the three rest of the three. Yes or no? Hello. Yes. Yes. Sir. But, but look at Sylvania. Sylvania differs from Bajaj. No, because p value is more than. Sylvania differs from Philips. Answer is no because p value is more than. But look at Sylvania versus Crompton. It differs. So there is. So this table can give you the multiple comparison. That's why this is called multiple comparison procedure or post hoc test. Okay. Same where same result is for Shafi. You can see. Shafi the same result. Philips versus Bajaj, non significant. Bajaj versus Crompton, significant. And so on. So if you compare the two tables, you will exactly get the same picture. So whether you apply Shafi, whether you apply 2K, now it's difficult to read this table. Then there is a simpler table, and that will give you homogeneous grouping. What do you mean by homogeneous grouping? That means those with those brands which are having no differences, or they are similar, they will be put, put into one subset. And those who are different will go to the another subset. And if still there are few more which are totally different, will go to the third subset and so on. So this is called homogeneous subsets. So let's look at homogeneous subsets. These are homogeneous subsets. So what it has done actually, Sylvania, Bajaj, Philips, they are in subset number two, while Crompton is in subset number one. Whether you apply 2K or you apply Shafi. Both of them are giving the same result. Right. So, what does this mean? This means there is not much difference between Sylvania, Bajaj, and Philips. But Crompton, life length of Crompton is this is mean actually. Life length of Crompton is only 59. Now, you would like to buy that brand which is having the minimum life length? Yes or no? Hello? Yes, sir. No, sir. Yeah. No, no, you are not going to buy that brand which is having the less life length. So obviously, Crompton is out. Crompton is totally out. 
Now comparison it is between the three. Which one? Sylvania, Bajaj, and Philips. And these are their mean life length. So which one is having better life length? Philips, Philips or Bajaj or Sylvania? Yes, please. Philips. Philips. That means you will buy a Philips, number one. This brand is the best. But followed by? Followed by? Bajaj. 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 But we have already seen that there is hardly any difference between Bajaj and Philips. Philips. Let's say I have an institute and I want to buy tubes from my pharma institute. Let's say I want to buy 1000 tubes because I have to put all around. And when I when I go to the market, I have seen that the Philips tube is 20 rupees costly. And Bajaj is per piece per tube. Philips is 20 rupees costly, with Bajaj is 20 rupees cheaper. And I have already verified that there is hardly any difference between the burning hours of Bajaj and Philips. Now, if I buy then Bajaj, so 1000 into 20, I will be saving 20,000 rupees. Yes or no? Yes, yes sir. So which one you will buy? Now you will buy Bajaj or you will buy Philips? Hello? Which one you will buy? If I want to buy bulk purchasing, if I want to do, there is hardly any difference. So I will buy the cheaper one. Yes or no? Yeah, Bajaj, yes. Bajaj, you will go for Bajaj then. So you can you can change your decision also. Right? I always say that when ladies go to the shop, there are two kinds of shoes. One is the one who 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 is Sometimes which is in plan A, we cannot afford, but at least second number we can afford. It happens sometimes. Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think you can understand what I'm trying to say. And the same result is with Shafi. So whether you apply Shafi, whether you apply 2K, you will get the same result. And you can show it graphically also that this is Bajaj, this is Philips, this is Sylvania. All of them are similar. But look at the Crompton. Crompton life length is very less. Nobody would like to buy that, right? So that well, this is what is mean by one way ANOVA. If you have any doubt in one way ANOVA, please you can ask me. Yes, please. Any doubt in one way ANOVA? Yeah, or it is clear? Hello? Uh, clear. Clear? Yes, yes okay. sir. Clear. All right. All right. Now we'll move on to two way ANOVA, which we have not done. Let's go for the theoretical part of two-way NOVA. In two-way NOVA, you see, in one-way NOVA, if you see in one-way NOVA, we have the differences in brands only. That's it. We have the differences in brands only. But in two-way NOVA, your outcome, let me just repeat, your outcome may be affected by two factors at the same time. What are these two factors? Let me give you an example. Let's say here I take yield of a crop, yield of a crop, and yield of a crop. Let's say, suppose I give this fertilizer one, fertilizer two, fertilizer three. And obviously, just continue fertilizer number K. Sorry, let's say fertilizer number say P, P number of fertilizers. And here I let me change this to uh, let's say seed one, seed one S one, seed two S two, and then seed. Now, this is the yield of a crop. Now you can think of that this is the yield of a crop. Yield of a crop is affected by two factors. One is the type of seed used and another is type of fertilizer use. Can you understand this data? Yes, please. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you can see the Yield of, for example, you look at this plot, this plot of land. It is receiving seed one, fertilizer one. But look at this one. 
this is receiving C2 but fertilizer one and so on. So that means the outcome, here is the outcome. Outcome is affected by two factors at the same time. One is the seed type of seed used. Another is the type of fertilizer used. Yes or no? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, there it was differences in brands only. But here are there are two types of differences. So what type what type of hypothesis we are going to test? First will be is there any significant difference between the type of seed used? Second, is there any significant difference between fertilizers used? So there are two null hypotheses. There are two null hypotheses. We call this as H01 and H02. So they will look like this. So let me go through the next next table. Two way nova. So this is two way nova. For example, let's say yield of a crop depends upon P number of seed used and Q number of fertilizers used. And I'm denoting this in previous example, we were denoting this by mu1, mu2, mu k. Here I'm writing alpha i and beta j, where alpha i denote the p i going from 1 to p and j going from 1 to q. I denotes the number of seed used, different type of seed used, and j denotes the number of fertilizers used. And these are the yield of a crop. And I want to test two null hypotheses H01. Alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2 is equal to alpha 3. So ith means ith seed. So there is no significant difference between the seeds. Then beta 1, beta 2, beta q. There is no significant difference between the fertilizers. So uh, what is your outcome? Outcome is yij. Yij is nothing but yield. So yield of a crop is dependent upon two factors, a type of seed used, type of fertilizer used. And I am testing this hypothesis. So two null hypotheses I am testing simultaneously. That's why this is called two-way ANOVA. This is called two-way ANOVA. If you compare this one-way ANOVA, there was no beta j. If you see, in one-way ANOVA, there was no beta j actually. This is mu plus alpha i plus eij. Only alpha i brands. But here you have alpha i plus beta j. Alpha i means seeds as well as fertilizers. Right? Now, how to make this ANOVA table again? Again, it will split this into three now, three components. In two way, in, in one way ANOVA, the total variation is split up into two components, between and within. But in two-way ANOVA, the total variation is split up into three components, which, which, which three components? One is between the levels of A, between the level of means A means between the seeds, between the B levels, between the B levels means between fertilizers, then the total and TSS total sum of square minus SSA plus SSB put the bracket, you will get SSE. This can be obtained by subtraction. Now, there are P number of seed used, Q number of fertilizers used. So total observation will be P into Q. So degree of freedom for total sum of scales will be PQ minus one, one less than the observations. Now, how many type of seed B has? A1, A2, AP, P number of. So degree of freedom is P minus one. How many fertilizers we have? One to write up to Q. So degree of freedom will be one less Q minus one. Then this is called sum of scales due to levels of A, sum of scales due to levels of B, sum of scales due to error, total sum of scales. Then again, we compute mean sum of scales. That is this part divided by P minus one mean then this divided by q minus 1 and then this divided by the difference. If I subtract p q minus 1 minus put the bracket p minus 1 plus q minus 1, virtually you will get this difference p minus 1 into q minus 1 and then divide by this. Right. Now you are getting the means. So I will be getting two f values here. One value is called f1, another is called f2. So what is the first value? MSA means sum of scales due to levels of A divided by MSA. We always divide by MSA, means error. So you will get the first F1. 
which will test this hypothesis H01. So first F1 will test this hypothesis that there is no significant difference between the type of seed used. And second will be MSB divided by MSE. That will test the second hypothesis. Right? So if both of them are non-significant or p-value in both of them is more than 0 0.05, there is no need to do any experiment. You can use the any combination of seeds, any combination of fertilizers, you are getting the same yield, no problem at all. Okay. But if you reject, let's say you reject this and accept this, it may happen. That means there is a differences in seeds, but no differences in fertilizers. Then post hoc will be carried out only for to see that if which which seeds differ, or it could be other way around also. There could be differences in fertilizers, but no differences in seeds. Then post hoc will be carried out only for this part, or both of them could be significant. That means there are differences in seeds also, differences in fertilizer also. So post hoc is required for both of them. So depending upon the situation, we need to perform post hoc. Of course, if both of them are non significant, there is no need to proceed further. Experiment is over. Is the two way ANOVA clear? Yes, please. Yes. Now I'll yes, take up sir. I'll take up one example and show you that how you can feed the data for two way. First, pick up the first row, then the second row. I'll tell you what to do. Let me show you the data first, and then we will it will be easier for you to understand. So I'm just closing this slide of one way ANOVA that is closed now. And uh, first of all, let me see two way ANOVA. Yeah, just look at this thing. See, the experiment is like this. There, there is an instrument and people want to learn that instrument. For example, whenever look at voting machines, when our votes are being polled, people are trained on machine, right? And they are using different methods of teaching. So there are three methods of teaching, method A, method B, and method C. And there are different people from age groups. Some people are less than 20 years, some are 20 to 29 years, some between 40 to 49 years, and some more than 50 years. And these are their time of learning in, seven, in hours, for example, if to less than 20 years, you taught by method A, it takes her about seven hours to give him training. But if you, again, the same person, less than 20, but taught by method B takes nine hours, taught by method C takes 10 hours. And this is how the observations are. So this is the time of learning. So time of learning depends upon two factors. Number one, which method is used and which age groups are used. So it depends upon two factors, age groups and the methods. So it's a problem of two way ANOVA. Yes, please. Is the problem clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now how to feed the data? I will feed the data. First, I'll pick up the first row, seven, nine, 10. And in seven, nine, 10, I will write down in front of that, one, two, and three. One, two, and three means I'll replace one with method A, two with method B, three with method C. And then in the second column, in the second third column, I will write one, one, one against all the three. Why? Because they all belong to less than 20. So your data will look like this. Let me open the data set and tell you how, how you can feed the data for two way ANOVA. Now you can see. Now you compare. 
see what i did can you see both the both the slides yes or no yes please hello yes now, sir this is this is how i feed the data 7 9 10 you can see time 7 9 10 then 7 comes under method a 9 comes under method b and uh, 10 comes under method c and i have simply written actually if you see from here i have simply written this one one two and three and later on i have labeled them that one is a two is b three is this but here i have written only one 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 age group because they all belong to less than 20. so one 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 you can you can check from here now how the label will be then one i have given that it is less than 20. so now if you compare this all these seven nine and ten they belong to method a b and c but they all belong to age group less than 20. yes or no yes please yes sir then i have put the second column eight nine and ten eight nine and ten again i copy and paste because they will also belong to abc but age group will change age group will be two two means i have labeled this as two two is nothing but the labeling is 20 to 29 20 to 29 so you can check the labels also you see age group labels from here you can check. one is less than 20 two is 20 to 29 three is 30 39 4 40 to 49 five is more than 50. so this is how you need to feed the data then number three and number four hopefully how to feed the data is clear yes please yes sir. why it is called yes, two way why it is called two way nova why it is called two way nova because your outcome depends upon two factors outcome depends upon two factors time of learning depends upon two factors the method used and the age groups now let's do the analysis but analysis for two way anova is slightly different from what we have learned in one way anova okay now go to analysis go to compare means if you go to compare means there is no two way anova can you check there is no two way anova yes or no hello yes sir there is no two way anova then where is the two way anova in spss go to the next one general linear model in general linear model you can see univariate multivariate repeated measure so go to univariate and your dependent variable is time and fixed factors are your methods and age groups take the methods here take the age groups here right and then you need to click at the model model is very important so go through the model click on to custom and in custom you take the methods on this side age groups on this side now we we cannot find out the interaction because there is one observation in each cell so you take the main effects only main effects so custom take the method on this side age groups on this side and click on to main effects continue then again in post hoc you can take the methods on this side age groups on this side and let's say let me press only chefe chefe is okay no problem continue and then in options you can click on to descriptive statistics descriptive means mean sd etc for methods for age groups and so on and in plots also you can draw certain plots say method versus age groups add or you can have age groups versus method opposite so this is method versus age groups this is age groups versus method that's all so your two way nova is complete and now you will get the output and in output how to read that output i'll tell you so this is the answer variance it will tell you that there are five observation under method a method b method c there are three under each age group now why why this standard deviation has not been computed because there was one observation in each cell and you cannot compute the standard deviation of one observation we don't require actually this table the most important table is this 
how many methods we were having yes please how many methods we were having anybody so three three so degree of freedom corresponding to this will be two can you see this yes please yes sir. yes sir. right and how many age groups we were having four 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 or five Five, 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 five. five So degree five, of freedom five. is degree of freedom is four. four. Here. Degree of freedom is four here. So again, this is a sum of squares. Degrees of freedom mean sum of squares. I mean eighteen point five three three divided by two, you will get nine point two. Twenty four point nine three three divided by four, you will get six point this. Then you, this is a mean square error. Point four three three. Then nine point nine point two. 67 divided by 0.433 you will get 21 6.4 to 323 divided by 433 you will get 14 point this and uh, this is for testing f1 this is your f1 this is f2 and these are their p values this f1 is for testing the differences in methods and the second f2 is for testing against age group is for testing the differences in age groups right and both the p-values are coming out to be significant. Both the p-values are coming out to be significant. What is the inference then? That there is a significant difference between the methods as well as there is a significant difference between the age groups. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that means we have to apply post hoc test on both of them, age groups as well as methods. methods. So first, now you see, multiple comparison method a versus method b what is the p value here significant or non significant method a versus method b non significant non it is non significant what about method a and method c significant so there is there is a difference between method a and method c but there is no difference between method a and method b similarly once method a is over you can take method b versus method a so method B also differs from method C. And method C differs from both of them, from method A as well as method B. But better is to go for this type of table, homogeneous table. It says that there is no difference between method A and method B. They have been put into one group, but they differ from method C. Method C is, is into another group. So what does this mean? This means method C takes more time 11.6 hours which method is better actually method a or method b yes please which takes less a, time or a. more time a, a. Method a. A. Less a. That is, yeah absolutely absolutely that means if you teach by method a you will take nine hours but there is hardly any difference between nine hours and 9.6 hours only half an hour more almost method b but let's say method a requires lcd projector screen overhead computer also but method b requires method b method method b requires blackboard and chalk now now which one you will is method a or method b method b method b so you can take such type of decision right so we able to identify that method a is the best one let's see age wise also so these are age wise comparison multiple comparison less than 20 versus 20 to 29 no change no difference less than 20 30 to 39 no difference less than 20 40 to 49 no difference but look at less than 20 and more than 50 there is a difference can you see that yes yes so similarly all others you can see differences but better better ways to go for this now in this table you can see overlap there is overlap here and overlap here whenever there is overlap how to read this table just click here and just cut from here read read like this now if you if you teach to less than 20 years of age group people they takes only 8.66 hours and if you teach to more than 50 years they are taking 12.33 hours. So which age group learn fast? Yes, please. Less than which? 20. Less than 20. Less than, but followed by? Followed by? 20, 20. 20. And there is hardly any difference. 
because if if let's say machine is very sophisticated it's it's a it's a lakh rupees then you want hand over this to the younger people they may destroy it then you can pick up the age group 20 to 29 yes or no yes right so we able to answer two questions now after applying to venova which method is better method a which type of people learn fast less than 20 years so that is the crux of the entire two way nova and there is a significant difference between the method of teaching as well as method of in the age groups and this graphically also you can show for example this is a teaching methods a b and c and if you teach by age groups so here this age group here there is one line here which is more than 50 but the last line blue line blue line is for less than 20 years so to, whether you teach by method a method b or method c less than 20 years by all the methods they learn fast then compare this also this is age group versus method a method b method c so if you see the blue line is method a method a green line is method b and this is method c so that means method a which is on the lower sides will take less time as compared to other methods so that is a graphical representation and this graphical representation blue line is for all those who are less than 20 years whichever method you choose they learn fast this is two way nova yes please is this okay yes sir so this is two way nova if you have any question in one way nova or two way nova you can ask me please any question hello no question yes please any question any question you want to ask this ANOVA test can be applicable for other types of hypothesis or only related to null hypothesis I think your question is not correct because if you are coming late I have explained you that ANOVA test is to be applied only when we compare more than two groups three groups four groups five groups then ANOVA if you are using if you want to compare only Two groups you can use t test but if more than two groups then we are going to use anova and also variance any other question please that question was in the chat box let me see another question this last one tripati jadav i think you are satisfied with the answer because ANOVA test is applicable only when we want to compare more than two groups. Then you will apply ANOVA. Yes, please. Any other? Any other question? Sir, two-way only for normal data? Pardon? Can you repeat? Hello? Sir, two-way also only for data which is normal? Yeah, one way NOVA, two way NOVA, they are all meant whenever we are having normality. Just like in T distribution, we need normality. ANOVA also require normality, assumption, no doubt. And if there is no normality assumption, then there are parallel tests in non parametric. And they are known as um, Crucical Wallis test or Friedman test. They are substitute of one way and two way NOVA. You can use them if the data is not normal. Okay. Okay, madam. Yes, sir. Yes. Now we are left with repeated ANOVA. And then we have one more session on uh, logistic regression. So should you do you need a break or should we should I continue? For repeated ANOVA. Sir, repeated, we can do repeated ANOVA. Yeah, we can complete the repeated ANOVA and then I'll move on. Okay. So can I ask ask a question just for my clarity? Yeah, please. 
you can yeah, so so basically if i'm comparing uh, uh, in independent sample test that's basically that you're relating two independent groups but the grouping variable is one say gender and there is male and female mm -hmm. yes for one way anova again grouping variable is one but the groups are more than two so say male female uh, lgbtq plus. transgender transgender you can take yeah. the third one. But yeah. for two-way ANOVA, the grouping variables are two. So it could be gender grouping and variable, something else. No, 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 no. Grouping variables with different levels. There with are two different levels. Yeah, yeah. Different. Yeah. Level one is having P number of levels, another is having Q number of levels. Yeah, yes. That is okay. the idea. Yeah. Got it. So it okay. could be two also. It could be two also. No problem. It could be two mm -hmm. also. For example, on one side you have a gender, on the other side you have a socioeconomic class. Socioeconomic lower class, yes. lower class, middle class, upper class, and you are looking for an income. Income is your uh, outcome. So income mm -hmm. for male, female, and they are according to the lower class, middle class, upper class, and then you can apply two way nova. So two way nova income depends upon gender wise and socioeconomic. Well as class. socioeconomic. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So, thank you. Sir. Any other question? I am happy that you are asking some questions. That's good. Any other question? So let's go for repeated ANOVA then. Is it okay? So let's complete a repeated ANOVA so that there is only logistic regression will be left that will cover after the break. I think you will be free today by 6.30, most probably. Um, okay. So one way ANOVA, two way ANOVA we have done. Let's go for the repeated measures. These are called repeated measure ANOVA. What is basically repeated ANOVA? Repeated ANOVA. It's an extension of PRT test, basically. Now, here in PRT test, you have pre test, then you have post test, if you remember. Yes or no? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But only pre and post you can compare using t-test not let's say first is at a baseline when the patient has come i note down their let's say blood pressure levels whenever they come to the hospital then give them some medicine patients are same call the same patients after 15 days again note down their blood pressure and ask them to continue with the medicines. Call them after again one month, 30 days. Now there will be third reading also for the same patients. Then call them after two months, fourth reading. Call them after three months, fifth reading. So basically, set of patients. If you are taking the you are taking the repeated measurements after for each follow up. For each follow up, you are taking the measurements then this type of ANOVA is called a repeated major ANOVA. Yes or no? Yes, please. Is that clear? Yes. yes so a repeated major anal analyzes group of related dependent variables that represents different measurements of the same attributes. At the same attribute means patients are same or group is same. For example, mm -hmm. let's look at this example. In a weight loss study, suppose the weights of several people are measured each week for five weeks each week for five weeks week number one week two week three week four week five the weights of the weeks are recorded in the variables we call this as weight one corresponding to week one weight two corresponding to week number two and the fifth weight five corresponding to week number five Sorry, weight number, weight corresponding to week five. Yes, weight five. And the gender of each person is also recorded. Either it is a male or it is a female. Right. Now, it's the same set of group in having male or female, having male or female, and their weights are taken at five different time points. Weight one, weight two, weight three, weight four, weight five. Then what is our problem? Our problem is to see whether there is a significant difference 
whether there is a significant difference within within means from weight one to weight two to three to four to five whether there is a significant change or not number one and if there are two groups male and female whether this significant overall change is reflected in male and female or not that is called between so we are basically looking into between and within and this type of ANOVA is called a repeated major ANOVA all right so weights measured for each subject repeatedly can be grouped by defining a within subject factor so i'll explain you what is the meaning of this the factor could be called a week overall factor could be called a week defined to have five levels week one week week two week three week four and week five the variables in the data file that groups male and females gender can be specified as between subject factor to study the differences between males and females right okay now i'll take up one example and then make you clear what is the how to carry out this repeated ANOVA? Just wait for a moment. This is a repeated measure. Okay. now there are not two groups there are three groups here one one group of patients they represent asian group then african group and american asian african and american and these are their body weights in pounds maybe so at whenever they come across initially body temp body is zero then body weight after let's say one month then two months, three months, four months, five months. So these are their body weights. Now, what is the problem? Problem is, is there any significant change from zero to five? That's within. Between is, is there any significant difference between Asian, African, and American? Since it's the same set of patients or same, same group of patients, same group of people. So same group of people with repeated measurements. That's why the name comes repeated measures. Yes, please. Is the problem clear? Hello? Is the problem yes, clear? Problem. problem is clear. Let's try to analyze this data and how to feed the data. Very, very important, please, for repeated measures. Go to analysis. Go to compare means there is no repeated measures go to general linear but there is a repeated measures so click on to repeat as measures now within subject factor name within subject factor name is your body let's call this as body or maybe body weight you can say body weight now how many levels are here how many levels yes please how many levels are here five, five. check Again, check. Six. 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 Now it is six. Why? Because it starts from zero. Zero. So zero at time point one, time point two, time point three, time point four, time point five. So basically zero is also counted. So there are six levels. So I have to feed number of levels is equal to? Yes, please. Number of levels is equal to? Six. 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 Yes. And major name is, let's say, body or body weight. Whatever you want to write. doesn't matter. Okay. All right. I'll remove this. Just a minute. Just a minute. Let me take analysis. General linear model. General linear model. Repeated measures. Factor 1. Number of levels is 6. And then add, add your major name is here. You can write the remove, let's say body weight, number of level is six. Please don't forget to press this add. And here you can write maybe body, doesn't matter. If you leave it blank, 
it will not go into effect. Okay, now it says body weight, there are six levels. Just define, define. So it says now six will be there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can take this as one, this as two, this as three, four, five, six. And then it says between subjects. Between means between Asian, African, and American. So that is a group. Within subject factor name is group. Yes, please. Is this clear how to feed the data? If there, there are four levels only, you can write four. Then only four figures will appear here. One, two, three, four, not six. Whatever the levels you define, they will appear within subject. Yes, please. Is this clear how to feed the data? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. now again, go to post hoc. We want to compare that. Go to post hoc. In post hoc, you want to compare African versus American or Asian. So apply chef here. Then in options, you must click on to descriptive. Descriptive for, yeah, descriptives. That's it. Descriptives. And if we in model, we don't require anything. So everything is done. Yeah, everything is done. Yeah, OK. Now your repeated measure is ready to perform. It will give you two types of results. First result will be, is there any significant change from 0 to 5? Yes or no? And then at which points there is a change so there is a let me see in model there is no option in contrast in contrast let's say simple first Let's say I also want to compare what is the change from 0 to 1, 0 to 3, 0 to 2, 0 to 3, and so on. So that's why I've chosen the first. First is your body 0. Last is body 6. And then change this to simple and first. So body weight, simple and first. So that's all. So continue. And press OK. Now you're getting the result. So here is the result of repeated ANOVA. First, it's, it says that there are six, six, there are six Asians, six, six African, six American, and these are their mean SD table. Body zero, that means initial, this was the result, mean SD. Then sec, first time, uh, second time result, third time result, fourth time result of mean SD, fifth and sixth. Now, here is the important table. It will give you basically, four statistics but you have to see only two either wilkes lambda or you have to see phil trace now where to see the phil trace where to see the wilkes lambda will depend will depend upon mochi's test of sphericity what is mochi's test of sphericity because there are six groups and variances in each groups may be different. If variances are almost same, then you can go for Pillay's trace. And if variances are different, then we have to go for Wilkes lambda. Right? Other two are not important. So if you look at the result, let's see this one. Mochi's test of sphericity. Mochi's test of sphericity test is whether there is a significant differences in variances or not and you can see this is the mosses value approximate chi square degree and this p value is coming out to be significant this is less than 0.05 whenever p value is less than less than 0.05 result is significant that, that means variances are different if variances are different then we go for wilkes lambda criteria 
if this would have been non significant if this would have been non significant we would have gone for pilastres we would have gone for pilastres now how many different levels were there yes please how many levels were there hello six levels six level so what is the degrees of freedom here one less that is five yes or no yes sir and against wilkes lambda five degrees one. of freedom this this is error and if you divide this by this you were this is your p value so p value is 0 0.0001 so if the p value is less than 0 0.05 result is result is no result is significant yes or no yes so result is significant means it simply says the overall results this multivariate test will give you over results result yes there is a significant difference whenever you move from body 0 to body 6 so there is a significant difference it doesn't tell you at which level it is it doesn't tell you nothing multivariate test will give you overall results that yes there is a significant change from body 0 to body 6 because this value is coming out to be significant is this would have been non significant so there is no change from body 0 to body 5 but this is significant so that there is there is significant change from body 0 to body 5 is that clear the multivariate test hello yes, yes sir yes. so multivariate test pillars trace has to be used whenever this is coming out to be non -significant. non significant and Wilkes lambda have to be used whenever this is coming out to be significant. Significant. Okay. Result will be almost same. And this is the main table, which will show you again. If I mean, whenever the sphericity is assumed, if sphericity assumed, you see this is a test for sphericity. It says it is significant. That means sphericity is not assumed. Sphericity is not assumed. Variances are different. That's why the sphericity is not assumed. So if this would have been non-significant, go for pillage trace for overall. And then in this case, you can go for greenhouse grazer. When the sphericity is doesn't assume, you can go for greenhouse grazer. So this is greenhouse grazer test. So it says that there is a significant difference. There is a significant difference. Again, the same result. Again, the same result that there is a significant difference from body 0 to body 6. Okay. Now, here is the important description. If I am comparing level 1 and level 2, there is a significant change. If I am comparing level 1 and level 3, there is, a, there is no significant change. Level 1 and level 4, there is no significant change level one and level five there is no significant change but look at level one and level six again there is a significant change hello so because i have chosen the first level for comparison body zero so body zero differs from only which one only level one level two and level six, six. level six. level two and level Six. six but at other time points it doesn't change you follow my point yes sir. right so there is no need to look for interaction this is called interaction term right and uh, then how many groups were there asian african and three three groups asian african and american mm -hmm. and the degrees of freedom will be two so this is an over table so degrees of freedom against group is coming out to be 0.037 is it less than 0.05 or more than less than point zero. so basically it is testing the hypothesis that body weight across all the time points for american african and asian they are same but hypothesis is rejected that means there is a there is a difference now which ones differ which ones differ is the comparison here first asian versus african significant difference so asians are different from africans but what about asian and american yes please asian and american not significant difference. not significant similarly african african and asian significant african and american no, difference. no significant 
so you can check from here american and asian no significant american and african no significant difference but better way is to go for this thing it's, it says basically that asian are asian and american they are close but africans are different this is how to read this table actually this will give you a better picture just cut from here if there is a overlap now you read like this asian and americans they are similar almost but africans are different africans are different right so this is what do you mean by the repeated major anova so it will give you the within comparison also and the between comparison also so this is what do you mean by repeated anova any question please hello no sir so we'll take a break and we'll come back at five o'clock will that be okay okay sir yes, or you sir. want okay, or you want earlier whatever you say can you just repeat one thing sir that in this test of sphericity hmm. which helps us to decide whether pillai's test or wilks lambda will be used